chose to raise awareness about sexual assault in collaboration with our health promotion specialist, Megan Harbert, Harbert who's sitting in the back. She's been the one that sent her, so we'll have, we'll introduce her later on um, throughout the presentation so that you guys can hear a little bit more about what Concordia offers um, for you guys as students here at Concordia, okay? So, my name's Jeanette, you guys don't know me, and I'll let um, my colleagues introduce themselves. My name is Paul Ferrer Ramirez. I'm Anthony. I'm Kristen. I'm Tali. Yeah, and then we'll have Kristen go ahead and introduce the learning objectives for this presentation and this workshop. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. We are super grateful. Um, we just want to go over some of the learning objectives so that you guys know what we're going to talk about. The first one is really to understand the meaning of sexual assault. I think that this can be something that we just don't talk about enough. Um, so we want to define it for you guys, make sure that you know what we're talking about. Next, we want to make sure that you guys are able to learn how to take proactive steps um, to reduce the risk of sexual assault and what that means for you guys um, as students, as parents, as workers here at that Concordia Irvine. We also want you guys to become aware of just the campus resources. Like, people are here to serve you guys in these types of situations. We want to make sure that you guys fully really know what's on your campus. And then lastly, to understand how to support a survivor of sexual assault. So we're going to dig, dig right in. So what? Um, sexual assault is definitely, um, according to your, 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 sorry, your university, this is how they define it, um, it refers to rape, sodomy, sexual abuse, and other non-sexual uh, just offenses, and these are serious crimes. So this is something serious that we're talking about, right? Um, the magnitude is really great. Um, and rape is also equally, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about that as well. And so it's when anybody engages in sexual intercourse that is multiple compulsion, when the victim is physically, mentally, or legally incapable of giving their consent. Um, and we just want to make sure that you guys know this is not limited to just for men. This is men, this is women. It doesn't matter if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're elderly, if you're young. Um, so many different people are really affected by this, and so we want to make sure that you guys are really aware of what this means for you. So the way that we like to describe it is just an umbrella. So there's the umbrella of sexual assault. Um, and all of this is really under there. So there is abuse, um, any type of sexual exploitation, um, rape, and then also any type of like physical um, forcing or sexual acts or attention. And really, according to your university, we want to just say like, what's your stance on it? What is uh, the university? view this as, and so um, as Christians, we view sex as part of our total personality and part of the total context of life. However, God in his word forbids sexual union or intercourse outside of the marriage relationship. So non-consensual physical behavior is inappropriate, unhealthy, and against God's word. Um, and so we also, we know how powerful this is, um, and we're going to talk a little bit more and be able to dissect it a little bit more. Um, so this is the stance on it, and if something were to happen, we're going to look at what are the things that we can do and how you guys play a role in that. Um, my name is Isaac Gaines Forte. Another, um, something really shocking that came to me when I was doing the, the research were the statistics, the numbers. It, I read somewhere that 83% of women who actually get raped, uh, get raped by someone who they know. So someone in the class, someone who happens to know who, who that person is. So it was very shocking to find um, those type of statistics. Also, from a male point of view, from, from having um, not to worry about stuff like that, I mean, I'm, I feel pretty safe being a male, so a lot of privilege. I, I come from a lot of privilege, not being able to relate that much to, to a woman, and that's when it comes to that sense. So it was very shocking to find the different uh, statistics out there, uh, the ways that we, we were having a class discussion uh, in preparation to this class, and also things like, uh, I don't think about going out at night and kind of watching who's behind me, or where to park, or having my keys like ready 
to go if something happens to me. I, I don't I don't I don't have that mentality. But women have that mentality. So it was very shocking and um, to find out what you guys go through. Your everyday living living, how to approach things, how to you know talk to strangers, things like that. So it's very shocking to find out um, that from, from the female perspective. So appointment surgery is when a woman is forced to have sexual activity against her fair will by someone she knows. The rapist may be a friend, a date, a neighbor, a partner, or even a husband. Uh, we talk about the three pillars of consent. Uh, when when people enter a relationship, um, they come to a, 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 an agreement. Uh, we're gonna date each other. We're gonna do this. We're gonna you know, go out on weekends or stuff, stuff like that, you know what I'm talking about. There's always something that's laid down on the table or some type of discussion as to what's going to happen throughout that relationship. When it comes to, to dating and uh, when it comes to relationships and when it, when it comes to when a woman and a man come together, uh, there's got to be consent also. So according, this is kind of leading a little bit into what Anthony is going to talk about, the yes means yes um, law that just came into effect. Uh, consent mean, uh, means to know exactly what's going to happen and how much a person is agreeing to. So this is going to happen, this is not going to happen. Laying that foundation. Uh, expressing the intent to participate. Yes, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. This is going to happen, this is not going to happen. Uh, really involuntary expressing that intent. So. The literature kind of talks about uh, as, a, uh, as the act takes place with, between two consenting adults, you're supposed to keep asking if, uh, if, if this is okay, if it's not, not okay. So it's a, 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 a mutual dialogue that takes place uh, during the, the relationship itself. Um, so next we're going to talk about the why. So kind of we started with what, like what is sexual assault and finding it, putting a definition to it. Um, and now we're about why. Why is this a problem? Why are we talking about this? Um, but to begin, we're going to start with just a small um, activity here. So I'm going to draw two boxes. This is going to be for men. And this one is going to be for women. So let's start with men. I want you to start listing off things that, what are messages that men are told that they should be or do? Strong. Strong, yeah. <clears throat> and you just keep throwing it on. Dominating. Really? Yeah. Masculine. So now we're going to talk about women, and now what I want to tell me is what is a woman called when she is not one of these things? So if she is the opposite of submissive, if she's not gentle, if she's not a feeler, what is she called? Open space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Overreact. Is 
flamboyant. Maybe we're all thinking it gay. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to see this is what society has us in. They have us in these boxes. So, for example, for women, we're put in this box. We're supposed to be feelers. We're supposed to have a lot of emotion, attractive, agreeable. We're supposed to submit to men or our husbands in general. And same with men. They're told they need to be strong, dominant, athletic. And then when they step out of these boxes, this is what they're called. And I want you to see this because this right here is... The, the pinnacle of why we have the oppression that we do. This is the pinnacle of why things like sexual assault and power and abuse exist in our society. Um, and we're doing this, we want you to see this because this is kind of what perpetuates the issues that we're going to talk about. This is why we're going to have the statistics that we're talking about. Um, and so this is more just to make you aware of this is kind of, um, so you can see it in your society when you see someone being called with these things. You ask yourself, why are they being called that? What are they being told? And what are they being told that they are when they're not, you know, for example, in the box, they step outside of that box, that boundary. Um, so, here's that for you. Okay, so we're going to go over some statistics here that we found were impacting in a positive way, kind of see how eye opening some of these stats are. So, one in every four women on a college campus is a victim of sexual assault. So, either verbal, physical, or even attempted rape or rape uh, is committed. 5% of uh, college sexual assaults are reported to law enforcement officials, only 5%. Okay, so 95% of them are, they go unreported, either because maybe the victim is ashamed, embarrassed, they feel like no one will believe them, things like that. So, and about two thirds of assaults are committed by someone the victim knows, like Oria is talking about acquaintance rape. Any thoughts or comments about some of these statistics? They're pretty eye-opening, like Oria is talking about, pretty shocking. So what do you guys think about these statistics? Is it the same statistics for men? Uh, it's just sexual assault in general. But yeah, for the ones that are women are, the men is a lot less. But. So if we count it off, women count it to four, it means one in, in four, right? So it's kind of an eye opening, right? Two in this room. Yeah, two in this room essentially. So any thoughts? Or no? Yes? I watched Law and Order SVU a lot. That deals a lot with sexual crimes and just seeing what the women have to go through when they do step up and get law enforcement involved, it's almost worse in a way. Like in our society, speaking of means that you're called this, that, whatever name, you're kicked out of your school, your job. Like it's in a way, it's like counterintuitive. Like you don't want to report it because you see what happens when people do. All right, that's a good point. So we found this um, really good quote, so lack of knowledge, that is the problem. So when people don't know about these statistics or they think that sexual assault is kind of a joke or when they make jokes about women, oh, she wanted it or things like that, it's just that lack of knowledge, lack of the seriousness of the situation. So we just thought that giving this presentation today is going to bring about that knowledge and maybe you guys can spread the word throughout Concordia. So who served the yes means yes law? Anyone else? Can anyone describe it to me? What does it mean? <clears throat> so it means that you have to um, get like, active consent throughout the whole process when you're being physically intimate. So right. as you progress, you need to get a confirmation. So California is actually the first state to have this law in the whole nation. Governor Jerry Brown um, signed this into law recently. And it's all about, it's that clear definition of what um, sexual activity is and the affirmative consent. So affirmative consent is all about, yeah, like she was talking about saying yes multiple times. Someone who is incapacitated with drugs and alcohol cannot give consent, right? So you have to be aware of those things. And yes means yes law is now requiring schools to uh, protect victims, right? Protect them from, um, they might be stalked and things like that. Also to have training for employees on the campus and they give um, counseling resources to victims. That's all part of the yes means yes law. So hopefully, um, 
victims will be able to feel more comfortable coming forward and things like that because there are those counseling resources and they have those protected rights from the Yes Means Yes law. What about the Cannabis Save Act? Who knows who first heard of that one? No one's heard of the Save Act? Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, so the Campus Save Act is a federal regulation, so any campus that gets federal funding is required to adhere to these. Uh, so part of it is making sure that we're being um, very uh, accurate with uh, our reporting of sexual assault on campus. It also requires us to do ongoing um, education, like what you guys are doing. Um, education, and then reporting, and then also services, too, for victims. Exactly. So what do you guys think about um, the yes and yes law and the campus say that? Wouldn't that not apply to us since we received no government funding for our school? Be a private institution? Technically, um, yes, but... Okay. Sorry, I was going to say financially too. So yes. through financial aid, anytime they're able to get scholarships. Oh, like and yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. I've heard of no means no. They changed the yes means yes. <laughs> okay. So that changed. Yeah. So that changed. There is like a big. Uh, it is a controversial topic too yeah. with no means no and yes means yes, and this is something that's um, rising in higher education because a lot of institutions of higher ed have been found. Um, that they're not ready to assist students who are being raped and who are being sexually assaulted. So I read an article by, um, what, it's like Higher Ed Today or something, that state, or like um, the news article that said like about 57 um, institutions of higher education have, not, have been found not, um, not fully prepared to assist students with um, crisis like these. So, so hopefully, yes, you guys will. So now how? Um, this is what we can do. I'm going to show you guys a video that I found that I found to be very powerful. It's about two, three minutes long. Um, that goes on to, um, we hear about victims who were sexually assaulted and the impact that it had um, in their lives. And there's two of them, only one of me. I was sexually assaulted. Empty, lost, lonely, upset, angry. Tuned his bed with his leg and then broke out his name, Marco, and then wrote his phone number with the message, Since you don't know me, here's my number, bitch. Police say a masked man forced himself into a student's home and sexually assaulted her. Sexual assault really has left a lot of students on edge, and that feeling isn't going away. I can tell you how the community is afraid. It's very concerning. I was a virgin and I was waiting to marry him. I did. Alcohol is a big involvement in sexual assault. Yeah, alcohol. A lot of students that um, we come across, or friends that come, that we come across, 
are probably intoxicated when this has happened. You guys agree? Mm -hmm. um, do you guys often, uh, when you guys go to parties and you guys see girls, I mean females or males, intoxicated, you ever see a male or a girl trying to go up onto another guy? Or maybe a guy pull a girl away and bring them into their room? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? So this is just raising awareness and be careful while you're out there um, engaging in these activities that there is something that could happen to you and always be aware of your surroundings, who puts stuff in your drinks, um, who makes your drinks, um, because something can easily happen to you guys if you guys aren't careful with um, what you're picking up, who you're hanging out with, if you're careful with your surroundings. Okay? Okay. And I'm not going off. This is a module. I broke it down for you guys, um, but it's uh, from an article that we read. And it talks about what institutions of higher education are doing to raise awareness of sexual assault. So to begin with community, um, being aware of the alcohol percentage um, and the involvement that students are having with alcohol and the high increase of participation that students can have in these activities that could um, increase the percentage of sexual assault on our campuses. And the organization, so Concordia, what is Concordia doing to raise awareness for sexual assault? Um, this is why we have Megan here to later explain to you guys what resources Concordia offers and what types of programs they're doing um, to raise awareness about this. And then peer and partner. For athletes, you can partner up with your coaches or you can do interventions. Um, we have the faculty res residents. We have Karen here from Bella Amore who empowers women to be a, be a part of leadership. So partner up with your mentors, partner up with your faculty, um, RAs, do collaborations with other organizations across campus to help raise awareness. And then individual, um, you guys are aware of our new bystanding policy in our student code of conduct, correct? Can someone tell me about that, please? Um, 
just because she is also so vital to this conversation and to Well, I just want to uh, make you guys aware, again, of some of the services that we have both on campus and off campus. As Karen was pointing out, it can be a really intimidating <coughs> process to come forward and report. Um, but there are resources for people that maybe just want counseling, that don't want to go forward with making um, a criminal report, or don't want to go forward with reporting to the university. So we want to let you guys know that there are plenty of options. So I'll start first with our on-campus resources. Uh, so I work in a wellness center and we do have counselors on staff, so they are able to maintain confidentiality. So if you did want to meet with somebody and just kind of talk through your experience, they are available um, and they are not required to report. Uh, they're, it's called mandated reporters, so many of the staff on campus are mandated to report uh, if a student discloses to them that they've been sexually assaulted. So there are counselors available who are non-mandated uh, and they have information in here. I'll go ahead and leave it on the table. You can pass it around. Um, we also have our campus ministry. So, um, Quentin Anderson is a non mandated crisis line, so you can call them. They have an advocate that can come meet you and talk through your options. So, if you're debating whether or not you want to get a medical exam, um, if you um, are trying to get resources, if you're trying to um, get academic um, accommodations because after the assault you're struggling in school, they are there to help you. So, they have advocates that for free, no charge, um, and this is that information. So if you have a friend or a sweet mate or someone you think could benefit from this, I would highly encourage you uh, to make sure you grab some of these pamphlets. And then as far as, do you want me to talk really briefly about the prevention yeah. aspect? Okay. So uh, this is kind of my little house. So I'm working on the prevention here at Concordia and trying to, um, to make some changes in our campus culture. So we have a group of students called Peer Health Educators, and we're working to do um, some educational presentations on campus. One of the things that we have done in the past is something called the Photo Line Project. So we want to support survivors on campus, and it's a display of t-shirts that were all uh, created by survivors of sexual assault. So that display goes to different college campuses, um, and we've actually had some students at Concordia make their own t-shirts and contribute to it as well. So we want to let survivors know that we are here and that we support them. Um, and then we're also working on a bystander intervention program called Green Dot. So we're in the beginning phases of those. We'll be starting to do some focus groups. So if you guys are interested in helping, we'd love to hear about some of the real life kind of situations that you guys have experienced here at Concordia so that we can then incorporate those into our presentations. Um, and then lastly, we also provide something called uh, our self-defense classes that we target um, primarily towards women. And those are just opportunities to kind of empower young ladies on our campus so they're not having those feelings like you were speaking about when they're going to their car um, or worried when they're walking around, just kind of a way to empower um, young women to be aware of their surroundings. Thank you. Anyways. And then uh, Kristen has done research on our website about um, Concordia Sexual Assault Protocol. So we've printed this out for you guys for you to take, put it in the back of your door, on your fridges, um, in case you know of, any, of anything or anyone who um, has gone through this. Um, there's steps for you to follow, and then, yeah, to share with your roommates. I'm going to check that out. And then lastly, I have printed out something. So bingo, we've all played bingo before, correct? We're not going to play bingo here, but this is something that you guys, I printed out so that you guys can walk away with. If you're ever interested in, you know, raising awareness and knowing more of it, or already if you're interested in doing an educational project, or something that you just kind of want to work on to raise more awareness um, about sexual assault. Um, pass this out so you guys get to see it. So bingo, you usually win whenever you had a vertical line, horizontal line, or you fulfill the entire thing, correct? Well, this one, you get to write a date. So it's kind of like a homework sheet. So if you um, have an open and honest conversation with your roommate or with a friend or with a resident, um, you can go ahead and write the date when you did it. So if you completed one whole thing, you kind of help raise awareness by completing an entire line, or if you want to be overachiever and complete the whole thing, that'd be awesome too. Okay? Um, you guys have questions, and you know, do you want to ask us? Does catcalling count as sexual assault? When like you're walking up to your neighbor's like 
Yes. <laughs> yes, we actually talked about that in class. Um, I actually shared my own experience to avoid running around, you know, as a woman, I used to have no fear going out and running on my own out on the street. But now, you know, I carry my cell phone or I'm just aware of my surroundings. Running out of Bobcat Trail, I used to get terrified running down there now because um, there's just so much that happens now. But yes, cat calling is definitely something that's inappropriate. Um, and women kind of just get really upset when they hear a man cat call on them. So, yeah. There was a really great, um, our really interesting article posted. I think the last couple weeks where this woman was, I want to say she was in New York City, uh, but she had a man in front of her had a camera on his back and for like a whole day recorded how many times got cat called in response to that. And then it just started a discussion about like cat calling and how women are recognized in that way. Um, how do I recommend doing that? Yeah. I saw something similar done in Chile. But the, 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 it was the, with a different approach. The mom of the guys actually dressed up like really provocative and they were walking down the street. So the, here comes the son and starts cock calling their own mom, his own mom. So it was so yeah, it was something different. Yeah, but it was, it was a really, I mean, it was really well done. It was in Spanish. So the mom turns around and talks. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Did this help you guys? Are you guys a little more aware? Thank you guys. Here's our references if you want to take notes. <laughs>